I am a South girl through and through and through. I don't care what anybody's got to say. vibrant and there's always music somewhere there's always you know there's always something going on and it's really inspiring actually it's inspired quite a few of my songs when I think about it the best trick I can give you for saying my name properly is to start with your mouth closed mm, pop. energy wise I think my music has got kind of a, an energy that Brixton has it's kind of always it feels like it's moving quite a lot there's like reggae influences in the music, but they're not obvious ones. There's loads of reggae music shops, but they don't always play reggae. They play rare groove and all sorts of other things, and kind of that's filtered into what I do, but without it being too kind of obvious, quite subtle. You wouldn't think Brixton would be subtle, but it can be. <laughs> I was born in South Africa and I lived there until I was about four. I guess in some ways Brixton's probably the closest thing to what that felt like, you know, in terms of kind of identifying with a place. It, it feels like they're quite close in lots of ways. And then I've lived in South London the rest of my life. I've always lived in South London, Brixton, a little bit in Stockwell, a little bit in Clapham and I'm still here. <laughs> it feels like it really represents me and all my cultural, you know, how, how culturally diverse I just am as a person in my upbringing and my ethnicity as well. You know, I feel like I kind of belong here and there's a bit of all of me all around. It feels like that. are too ready and quick to fall into the preconceptions that other people have of them or to create preconceptions of other people and for this record and for me I just don't want that. Just listen to it and if you like it then you like it and love it for what it is. Being on stage is like, that's it for me. I could just do that. I, you know, I love it and I, and I write music to share with people and being on stage with an audience in front of you is like the ultimate place for doing that. You can kind of get an instant response. You're not waiting for the charts to tell you <laughs> whether they like it or not. You've got the challenge of trying to win them over and communicating with them there and then. And if they don't like it and they're just silent and not giving you anything, you've got to work harder. And, I, yeah, I really, really am excited about being on stage and I can't wait to get this album together with the band and work it and get up there. I've worked with loads of people, lots of people in various capacities. I have done backing vocals for Miss Dynamite and Natasha Bedingfield. I learned so much doing that, you know. To some degree it was a job and it was paying the bills and it was but it was still singing and doing something that I loved. Natasha was absolutely like absolutely lovely to work with, really, really lovely person. So was Miss Dynamite, you know, um, I've never really, I kind of tend to work with people I like working with. I'm not someone who's going to be like, oh, they're paying the bills, I'll take the ru to rubbish. Like, it doesn't really work like that for me. <laughs> I'll be like, nah, mate, <laughs> sorry. My name is South African, it's a Sutu name, and it might sound exotic, but actually it's as common as Lisa in South Africa, so um, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't overthink it <laughs> too much. <laughs> it means gift, by the way, lots of people always ask what it means. I 
as cliche as it might sound, I just want to maintain as much integrity to myself and what I believe in as possible you know um, it has taken me a while to get here I've had to work really hard for it it's not over yet you know there's still a whole load of work to be done and I don't ever want to take for granted any of the things that are happening I take for granted any of the things that are possible you know and just work towards them it ain't over till